Welcome to the third and final podcast in this series on the new and very exciting 12C SQL pattern matching feature. My name is Keith Laker. I'm a senior principal product manager for data warehousing and big data at Oracle. And if you have any questions about SQL pattern matching, then please feel free to contact me via my blog. In the last of this series of three podcasts on SQL pattern matching, we're going to examine three real world use cases for pattern matching and show how the new 12C match recognize clause can make your life so much simpler. During this podcast, we're going to examine three scenarios. Scenario one is the sessionization from user logs. The second scenario is the analysis of call detail records. And the final scenario is the tracking of suspicious money transfers. So let's start with the first real world use case, which is the analysis of the sessionization of. Okay, let's start with use case number one, extracting session information from user logs. One of the most popular use cases for pattern matching is to analyze user activity on a website. Pattern matching is used to identify each session within a series of clicks and then track user activity that typically involves multiple events, such as click activity, moving from page A to page B and responding to recommendations. But what do we mean by a session? Typically in terms of pattern matching, will define a session as a sequence of one or more events with the same partition key where the inter timestamp gap is less than a specified threshold. To do this, we need to determine the user ID within the data set, and then we need to join multiple events and determine if they belong to the current session or a new session. And this can be achieved by defining a value for the inter row timestamp gap. In this way, we can determine for each user when a particular session ends and a new session begins. So if we take a raw log file, the first step would be to identify the sessions by user. Then the next step would be to aggregate that data to determine the total number of sessions per user. In this case, we're using a built-in function to return a running total of the number of sessions per user. And here you can see that Mary has logged three separate sessions and Sam has also logged three separate sessions. So let's look at the SQL match recognize statement used to create this output. We've bucketed the data by user ID using the partition by clause and then sorted the data by time. Our pattern requires us to match one or more instances of event S as shown in the pattern clause, where S is the current time minus the previous time, and it must be less than or equal to 10. And this is shown in the define clause. Our output table defined by the measures clause contains the session ID, which is calculated using the built-in feature match number. And we reviewed this in the second podcast, along with the other built-in function called classifier. Note that in the select clause, we can still refer to columns in the table events, such as time and user ID event, even though these columns are not included in the measures clause. Now, assigning numbers at the detail level is just the start of the analytical process. The real business value in using pattern matching for this type of analysis comes after aggregating the data by session to give a higher level picture. And typical aggregations include summarizing the events per session along with the total session duration. The output from the previous statement can be viewed as a starting point for further analysis and illustrates the point that pattern matching is an evolutionary process. Once we've established that the pattern is returning the expected results, we might want to move on to aggregating those results and adding additional data points, such as how many events happened within an individual session and what was the total duration of an individual session. In this slide, we've reduced the output from our previous table 
by using the one row per match clause, which we'll see in a minute, and adding some aggregations to count the number of events and duration of each session. And the SQL to achieve this is shown here, where you can see we've added new measures such as count star and calculated the duration of each session by subtracting the first instance of a timestamp from the last instance of a timestamp within our pattern matching. Features such as last, first and the use of aggregations such as count were discussed in the second podcast in our series and you can get more information about these features from the SQL documentation. So here we've shown how you can analyze session logs and create both detailed and summary aggregate data from those logs. So now let's move on to our second use case, which is the analysis. Okay, now let's look at our second real world use case, which is the analysis of call detail records. One of the most important metrics for telecommunication companies is call quality. They typically track how often a caller has to redial during a session because the call was dropped. The business issue here is that low levels of call quality, i.e. high instances of dropped calls, increases the likelihood that a customer will defect to a competitor. This is known as churn. It's an expensive process to recruit new customers, so many telecommunication companies want to ensure that customers remain loyal. Tracking call quality requires us to analyse events such as call start time, call end time, caller ID, call EID. And now let's look at how the match recognise command can be used to track call quality. The following example finds the sessions where calls between two people are grouped into a session if the gap between subsequent calls is within a threshold of 60 seconds. That threshold is specified in the define clause. The measure clause returns information about each call, such as how many times calls were restarted in a session, total effective call duration, and total interrupted duration. As you can see from this code, the syntax is relatively easy to understand and most, most business users would be able to take this code and confidently reuse it within their BI workflows, even modifying it to create additional metrics. Let's compare the simplicity of the match recognize syntax with the pre-C, pre-12C SQL code needed to extract the same information. First, we should note that prior to 12C, it was actually possible to use SQL to support pattern matching requirements. However, it was not easy to write the required code and or make subsequent modifications. The simplicity and elegance of the 12C match recognized clause will be welcomed by developers, DBAs and business users because it makes designing and implementing pattern matching requirements so much easier. So in the next real world use case, we'll look at tracking suspicion. Okay, now let's look at our final real world use case, which is about tracking suspicious money transfers. Many companies are looking for simple and more efficient ways to identify and track fraud. The ability to search for suspicious financial patterns is becoming a primary requirement and Oracle SQL pattern matching is the perfect in database SQL method for doing this as it offers fast and efficient processing. The richness of this SQL feature allows developers to define unusual and suspect patterns of behavior that are unique to their industry or particular circumstances. For example, you might need to search for a behavior that seems suspicious when there's a transfer, a transfer of funds. A typical suspicious transfer could be defined as three or small money transfers less than $2,000 within 30 days, followed by a larger transfer of a million dollars within 10 days of the last small transfer. Using the pattern clause, it's relatively easy to define a series of statements that first identify the small transfers, determine if the small transfers occurred within a specified time period, in this case, 30 days, and lastly, catch the last transfers and then ensure that those transfers occurred within a specified time window of the last small transfer, 
In this case, that window is 10 days. Now let's enhance our statement to look a little closer at where the money's actually going. And let's track transfers to different accounts based on the size of those transfers. Here we can see that we've expanded event X to capture situations where the small transfer of funds is to different accounts and where in total those transfers are less than $2,000. So you can see we're developing a very sophisticated pattern to capture suspected fraudulent activities, but the code is relatively easy to read and understand, and that's always a good sign of great code. And that concludes our look at... And that is it for this podcast on use cases. In this series, we've looked at the basic concepts of pattern matching. We've reviewed the new 12C match recognized clause, and we've looked at some real world use cases. Overall, I think you'll agree that with the new in database pattern matching capabilities, it significantly reduces code complexity while providing all the flexibility and sophistication of non-SQL declarative languages such as Perl. Using SQL pattern matching, you can further maximize your investment in Oracle database technology. For more information about SQL pattern matching in 12C, please refer to the database documentation and also the analytical SQL homepage on OTN, where you'll find links to white papers and our Oracle by example tutorials. Thank you very much for listening.